good Friday morning, first graders. It's good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. And if you were at our Zoom meeting last night, awesome. Thank you for being there. Um, I got my coffee this morning. A little different this morning. Instead of Spider-Man, I got Batman. And this is kind of a cool mug. So, let's see. Straight up, back in the 1940s, that's what Spider-Man looked er, that's what Batman looked like. See, I gotta have more Batman because I keep thinking of Spider-Man now. 1940s Batman. 1950s. 1960s. 1970s. 1980s. And 1990s. Oh, and the 2000s Batman. And 2010 Batman. Oh, man, this mug is outdated. I need a 2020 version. There's... That's the handle. I guess I'm the 2020 version of Batman because I'm holding on to him. Anyways, bad joke. Bat joke. Uh, chapter three. I'm getting distracted by my own horrible jokes. Chapter three of the Boxcar Children, Surprise Island. Let's get into it. So everything's going fine and dandy at the Surprise Island so far. Chapter three, The Garden. Jesse was not the first one to wake up the next day. At six o'clock, Henry went very quietly to her room and opened the swinging door to let Watch out. The dog came very quietly and followed Henry as he walked out of the barn to the spring. Henry stood still and looked around. He was right. It was just as he thought last night. There was a garden with rows and rows of vegetables in it. I wonder if this garden belongs to Captain Daniel, thought Henry. Hmm. Then he heard a little noise and turned around. A young man was coming toward him. His head was down as he walked. Henry looked at him carefully. Henry thought the man looked very sad, but he forgot that when the stranger looked up and smiled. I'm Joe, he said. I'm the handyman. How do you like the garden? Mine? How do you like your garden? It's mine? asked Henry. Picture. Yes, there are two gardens on this island. One belongs to Captain Daniel, and this one is yours. How did that happen? asked Henry. I just got here. Well, your grandfather knew that you would rather plant it yourself. If you did, it would be too late to start planting when you got out of school. So, he told Captain Daniel to plant it, and then he said you would weed and look after the garden when you came. I will, said Henry, opening one of the peas. These are big enough to eat now. Yes, said Joe, the peas are just right, but nothing else will be ready until later. <clears throat> Haven't you ever eaten tiny vegetables? We did once, said Henry. We pulled them because there were too many of them in the garden. It makes me hungry when I remember how good they were. The girls made such good things to eat out of almost nothing. The other children appeared at just that minute. But it was Benny who spoke first. Hello, Joe, he said. You look just like Joe. Is this your garden? <laughs> no, said Joe, laughing. It's yours. Oh, no, it isn't, said Benny. It is ours, Benny, said Henry. Joe and Captain Daniel started it for us. And you may help me weed it. Not now, said Benny. I want my breakfast. We'll eat soon, said Jesse, smiling at Joe. This is Violet, and I'm Jesse. Joe said, yes, Captain Daniel told me Captain Daniel told me all your names. I feel as if I know you all. Oh look, cried Benny. Peas. I'd like peas for dinner. Our dinner is all planned, then, said Jesse. We'll have peas, and everyone will have to pick and shell them. Shell means you take the peas out of the pea pod. They walked slowly back to the barn, leaving Joe at the woodpile. He's nice, isn't he, said Violet, as they walked along. They all agreed that he was. After the four bowls and the bread and milk were set on the table, the children sat down carefully on the packing boxes. Then Jesse said, I think that after breakfast, we'd better make a plan for the summer. Every day we must go swimming. That sounds good. And every day we must cook something at noon. After dinner, we must either make something or go exploring. Make something, such as a dish cupboard, I suppose, said Henry, looking at Violet. That's not a bad idea, Henry, cried Violet. I will make you a cupboard this very day, said Henry. 
Let's wash the dishes and pick the peas now, said Jesse. Henry can make the dish cupboard while we shell the peas. We'll take the dishpan to hold them. On the way to the spring with their bowls and the dishpan, they passed Joe at the woodpile. Henry, called Joe, stopping his work. Did you know that Captain Daniel goes over to the mainland every morning for groceries? If you need any groceries, you may leave your order on a piece of paper in the box on the dock. Captain Daniel will bring your order back to the island before dinner. Oh, how nice, said Jesse. I was wondering what to do about milk. Ours is almost gone. Just write what you want and I will take it down now, said Joe. Here is my pen. Jesse and Henry sat down facing each other on rocks to think. We must have butter for the peas, said Jesse, writing it down on a piece of paper from Joe's pocket. We want bread and four bottles of milk every day all summer, said Henry. Sugar, called Benny, and some dog bread for watch. Good, said Henry. I almost forgot watch. I want to go with Joe and see the little box, said Benny, taking Joe's hand. Let him go, said Violet. I'll wash his bowl for him and we can pick peas without him. Then the older children set to work. They picked enough for dinner, but lots of peas were left. Enough for two more dinners, said Henry, very pleased. And more will grow. Now I will start that cupboard while you girls shell the peas. How many places you need to put things, Jesse? One shelf for spoons and things, said Jesse. And one shelf for dishes, said Violet. And one shelf for pans and kettles, said Jesse. And an extra shelf for groceries. The two girls sat in the open door of the barn shelling peas. Henry began building the cupboard. Picture of Henry building the cupboard. And the ladies shelling the peas. What time shall we go swimming, asked Jesse. We could go in right before lunch, said Henry. Or, if you were too busy cooking, we could swim before breakfast. And maybe again at four o'clock. Fine, said Jesse. Before breakfast when we feel like it. Four o'clock when we don't. Maybe both. And go to bed at eight o'clock or as soon as it gets dark. Oh dear, do we all have to go to bed so early, asked Violet. You'll want to, believe me, said Henry. You wait and see. When the peas were shelled, Benny came running back. It's a big box, Violet, he said, and it has a little door and will hold lots of bottles and milk and everything. I like to open the door and take out the things. What did you take out, asked Violet. Oh, Captain Daniel let me take out some letters and packages, answered Benny. Maybe you'd like to do that every day, said Benny, said Henry. You may take the order down to the box. Then you may get the groceries and letters when they come home. I'd like to do that, said Benny. Captain Daniel was there, and he said, he's bringing our groceries soon. Then I can open the little door and get them. That's fine, said Henry. He was glad to please Benny and get a little work done at the same time. Come and hold this door for me, will you? Oh! Our cupboard has doors, said Violet. She watched Henry put two pieces of heavy cloth on the doors so they would open and shut. The morning passed very quickly. Jesse lighted the little stove, boiled some water in the kettle, and put in the peas. When they were done, she added some salt and filled the four dishes with peas. On the top of each dish, she put a piece of butter. There was no need to call anyone for the whole family, and the dog stood watching over her. Oh boy, cried Henry as he began to eat. Oh boy, cried Benny. Violet said nothing, but when her first dish was empty, she passed it for more. This is what I like, said Jesse. Everything seems better when we have to work to get it. It was fun to put the white paper in the new dish cupboard and find the best places for each cup and bowl. At And at one o'clock, the barn was once more in order. The cupboard was shut, and the four children and their dog were ready to explore the island. Finally. Chapter four. Clamming. I'm going to show you the picture. Clamming. The children walked through the beach grass and sat on the sand. That sounds great right now. I would love to be at the beach. Wouldn't you? Oh, yeah.
That's good. Jesse, look at that! cried Benny, pointing. As he spoke, a stream of water shot out of the sand. But Henry did not stop to say how pretty it was. Clams! he shouted. He jumped up and took a stick from the beach. The rest of the children and the dog ran to watch Henry as he began to dig. Sure enough, he took a real clam from the wet hole. Have you ever seen a clam? Have you ever held one? If you haven't, it's pretty cool. You gotta be near the ocean, though. Oh, I wish I had a shovel, cried Henry. There are lots of clams here. See the hole? See that? Let's run up and get two big spoons and... The dish pan, cried Jesse. They raced for the tools, leaving Benny and Violet with a stick. When they came running back, they found that Benny had dug out another clam. I'm going to keep mine, said Benny, very pleased with himself. It is such a pretty purple color. You can put all yours together in this pan, said Benny. In this pan, Benny, said Jesse, giving him a saucepan. You won't want to keep them when you find out how good they are to eat. The children took off their shoes and set to work. There's another, cried Benny. I can't dig fast enough. Watch seemed to know what was going on. He stood still a minute watching Benny dig with the stick. Then he began to dig too with his paws. Good dog, right? Good old watch, cried Benny. You can do all my digging if you want and I will take the clams out for you. As if he really did understand, the dog waited for Benny to show him where the clam was. Then he began to dig again. The older children laughed to see the sand fly under his paws. But they were very glad to see the fan bit. The pan fill up. Here's Watch doing it. I suppose these are for dinner tomorrow, said Henry, as he threw a clam on the pile. Yes, said Jesse. These will keep all right here. We can cover them all over with seaweed. I think we have enough, said Henry, looking at the pan. We went to the water and pulled out a lot of seaweed. He spread this carefully over the clams. I wish we knew what was around the, around that next point, he said. Let's find out. We're exploring now, Benny, said Violet. You must keep your eyes open. Benny's eyes were certainly open when he went around to the point. In the water near the beach was a little raft. Oh, I know that. Grandfather fixed this place for us to swim in, said Benny. <clears throat> of course he did, said Henry. The water here can't be over my head, but it is deep enough for swimming. The children explored until three o'clock. Then they all agreed to go swimming and went to their rooms to put on their suits. When they came back to the beach, they all walked together in the water. Cold, said Benny, walking out again. I like warm water. That's because you're not in all over, said Jesse, laughing. You just watch Henry, and you'll soon like it. They all watched Henry as he went quickly into the water and began swimming hand over hand to the raft. Watch swam along beside him. It's great, Henry shouted as he sat on the raft. Come on out, Jesse. I will, just as soon as I get Benny in, she called back. You'll never be warm unless you go in all the way, Benny. But Benny would not go in. He sat in his swimming suit, throwing stones into the water. Violet was down at the beach looking for seaweed. She said she would stay with Benny while Jesse swam out to the raft. As Jesse and Henry sat with their feet in the water, they saw a man coming. It's Joe, said Henry. It was Joe, and he was wearing a swimming suit. Henry watched as Joe came along the beach and sat down beside Benny. How is the water today? asked Joe. It's awfully cold, replied Benny. It's ice melted. I guess that's because you haven't been in all over, said Joe, smiling. Yeah, that's what Jesse says, said Benny. That is called rockweed, said Joe suddenly, as Violet picked up a long piece of brown seaweed. There are beautiful seaweeds around here. See this dark green one on the sand? And here's another red one. Look, there's a piece of it in the wave. Joe went into the water and Violet followed him. Oh, there it goes, she cried. We've lost it. Benny was standing up by this time, looking into the waves. He did not even feel the water washing over his feet. The seaweed came up on a wave and went down again. This time, Benny went after it. I got it, he shouted. He was right. He had caught the red seaweed and... He was wet all over. <clears throat> Good for you, Benny, said Joe with a smile. Let me take it a minute. Here, said Benny, handing the seaweed to Joe. He did not know that he was standing in melted ice. Say, I have an idea, said Joe. Float the seaweed like this in the water, then pick it up by putting a piece of writing paper under it 
and spread out the feathery branches with a pin. Will the seaweed stay on the paper? asked Violet. Here's a picture. Yes, said Joe. There is something in the seaweed that makes it stick to the paper when it's dry. Then you can use the paper for writing letters. Oh, I'd like that, cried Violet, but I'd also like to make a seaweed collection. Fine, said Henry, for he and Jesse had come back from the raft to see what was going on. You can write down the names of the seaweed and make a little book. That will be hard to do. There aren't many everyday names for seaweed, said Joe. You know lots of things, don't you, Joe, said Benny. The three older children agreed, for they had seen how clever Joe had been in getting Benny into the cold water without him knowing it. After they had dressed and were sitting down to supper, Henry was thinking about Joe. Later when he was in bed, he thought, Joe is a very strange handyman. To, the know, to know the names of different kinds of seaweed? Hmm. That is the end of chapter four. And I'm going to hold off on chapter five because these are all pretty long chapters. So uh, Monday, chapter five will be coming at you. You may have noticed that this morning, Clever is out. And actually, I'm recording this at nine. It's 926 right now when I'm recording this. Um, Clever is actually down right now because there was a power outage downtown. And Clever is on the Spokane Public Schools servers, internet servers. So basically, if the power's down, the internet that supports Clever for us is down as well. So when it's back, you'll be able to watch this video. It might seem kind of silly that I'm talking about it because you're watching this video now and I'm back. But I record these ahead of time and then I upload them to Clever later. So uh, yeah, hopefully it gets fixed. Hopefully you're watching this this morning. But if you're watching in the afternoon, maybe it took longer for them to fix. I don't know. Uh, it's Friday. I'm hop hoping you have a good Friday and a good weekend at that. Um, today was your last spelling test, so that's cool. Thank you for sending me those scores. Thanks to your parents and anyone else that's helping you out with that. Um, let's see, what are my plans for the weekend? Well, my brother-in-law's birthday is today. Brother-in-law, so it's my wife's sister's husband, okay? So I call him my brother-in-law. Um, his name is Ronald, but he goes by Red. Uh, he does like everything that's red. So I'm thinking we're going to make him a red velvet cake. And he really likes planets. So, whoa, holy moly, there's a giant spider crawling on my floor. Oh my gosh. It just caught the corner of my eye. Ooh, it's coming towards me. Whew, it's nasty. Nasty. I'll show you in a second. But anyway, my uh, brother-in-law's birthday is today and we're having a party for him tomorrow. We were going to do it outdoors, but we might have to reschedule it if it rains. Uh, but yeah, that's my plan so far. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you Monday and... Okay, I'll show you the spider. You're coming down to the floor. Down. Down. Oh, Ooh, he's not moving. Oh, now he's moving. Can you see him? Holy moly, he's on a roll. Gross.